In this video traders, we're gonna look at the inside bar after a breakout trade, the blend of the two powerful trading setups into combined into one good strategy. Stay tuned. Hey traders and investors, a very warm welcome to you. So just as I said earlier, we've got two distinct trading setups here. We've got the breakout, which sometimes gets a bit of a bad rap because I know very often people are trying to trade breakouts, they're getting faked out, they're getting frustrated. Then when it finally goes, they're not on board because 20% of the time markets are not in a trend. So yeah, there's that, but it can be very, very powerful when we time it right. So we've got that combined with an inside bar, which is a very useful way of us telling when potentially we've got an expansion volatility coming up. So we combine the two to blend them into a powerful trading strategy that you may consider putting into your trading setup arsenal. Okay, so let's have a look at the rules. Let's have a look at what it's all about. So first things first, we've got a resistance level. So we might have been congesting in a range. We might have been at uh, a decent level of resistance from prior weeks. It might be a high, it might be something, something that's decent and strong. And normally if it breaks out, you're thinking it's gonna break out, it's gonna go, I wanna be involved in it. Now, as I say, breakouts can be a little bit frustrating because you're trying to take them. They kind of go, they don't go, they stop, they stall. All sorts of things happen. So this is a way of getting on board it after it's happened without kind of giving back too much, if that makes sense. So. The market's got to break out strongly. So by strongly, usual parameters we're looking for, good strength, good size in the volume, uh, it's good size in the candle, should I say, uh, good volume, all the usual things that we like to see. Not much pullback, close above it, if on a daily chart. So a nice, strong, solid breakout. Okay, then after the breakout, we want to see one or more inside bars. And inside bar is basically a narrow range, basically, inside the day of the break. So the break is X, we're looking for, it's below the high, hasn't broke out the high, and it's a small range as well. So why do we wanna look for this? If you think of it as supply demand, right? So we've got the breakout scenario, bang, a lot of supply comes in, breaks through that, sorry, a lot of demand comes in, supply will be on the downside, a lot of demand comes in, breaks through the high, pushes to the high side, bang, lots of demand, lots of demand, lots of demand, lots of demand, close. Now the next day happens, what happens? People kind of wait and see what happens. If their sellers were genuinely aggressive, supply would hit and we'd go right back down to the breakout point. And it might be a fake out, that's where we get those fake outs coming because sellers think, whoa, this is a bargain. This is way more expensive than it was before. I'm gonna dump my stock into this. I'm gonna dump my, dump my contracts, whatever it may be. When that doesn't happen and we get that inside bar, i.e. people are accepting this as a new level and are comfortable with it, maybe one day, maybe two days, maybe even three. We won't go more than three. The point is, it's accepted as a new level. Sellers aren't perceiving this as extreme value all of a sudden, and buyers are going, okay, well, we're not getting any cheaper. This thing's not getting any cheaper. I'm gonna have to do something. So that's the premise of it, right? We breaked out, buyers think waiting for a pullback doesn't come, it's not gonna get any cheaper. We're trying to front run those guys and jump on their coattails by getting on board this when they think, hey, it's not going any lower. I'm not gonna get a cheaper price. I wanna get on board it, so I'm gonna pile in now. And a collection of people doing that is gonna cause this price to rip to highs. And the counter argument is we don't see sellers seeing it as great value. So we see that inside bar, multiple Multiple inside bars, I'm gonna say, let's just take a couple off here. It's just for illustration purposes. Two maximum, maybe three. Have a judge it for yourself and have a look at depending on the market you're trading. And then what we're doing is we're going long at the inside bar, high break, or even better to be honest, going long. Uh, these would be inside bars here, wouldn't they, right? So you've got three inside bars, small ranges, not taking out the prior breakout high. We're gonna go long then as we break out either that inside bar high, whether you wanna use the prior day, doesn't matter, or you wanna use the highest of the three if it's three. But if you wanna be extra secure, extra, sorry, cautious and, and kind of going with the risk, you wanna go out from the last breakout high and that's probably gonna be your breakout bar high uh, if you're looking that way. You might have a second bar that adds touches the high and comes back and then you get inside bars after that. So you might not necessarily have an inside bar immediately, but the point is you're getting that contraction volatility, the contraction range at the high, near to the high of the bar. You don't really want a retracement then inside bar right back at support, it doesn't really count. You wanna see it up here, so it's almost like a flag type thing, but it has to be below the high to be quantified as an inside bar. You don't wanna see it pushing to new highs. You wanna see it kind of pausing and accepting the new level. And then as it starts to go, whether that's day three or day four, you're now long on a breakthrough here 
And the good thing about this one, guys, the same with any setup, is it's very easy to quantify the risk. Where do you put the risk? You put it at the low of that cluster of the outside of the inside bars. So whatever that low may be, it's relatively tight. And the point is, if it's a good setup and strategy, and it's powerful, and if it's powerful and it's correct it's unlikely to go back there. And if it does, it's a matter of quantified the risk. You're not gonna get caught out. You don't have to, like a traditional breakout do, have your stop kind of in here and sit through all this back to here. You can just nudge it right up under those, the lower of those inside bars and say, yeah, that's great. I'm long, I'm on the breakout. I've quantified the risk on it. Uh, I know that supply demand is in my favor. We have broken out, we've accepted a new level. Now let's wait for the next leg in price. And often you'll get a multiple aggressive legs as people, like I say, look, realize they're not gonna get any cheaper buyers, start to step in, start to then accumulate, and we may start to get a little bit of an extension in the trend. So that's the inside bar after breakout day. It's a better way of trading breakouts, in my opinion, because you can quantify that risk way, way easier. You don't have to kind of judge, guess the breakout and get caught with a fake out. You don't have to buy this high here and kind of end up risking the whole move, which is normally quite extensive. You can wait for it to pause, have the inside break. Then you can wait for it to break after that. And you've got a lovely place to put your stop and quantify the risk. It means you can take a little bit more size on. You can start looking at 10, 10 R, that kind of thing. And it just works quite nicely. So anyway, uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. You're gonna stick it in your trading setup book. Uh, and you're going to tweak it and adjust it. Let me know if you've got any tweaks and adjustments for this as well. Always interested to see what you guys have got to say. And if you like this kind of stuff, give it a thumbs up. It's much appreciated. And subscribe, yeah, if you haven't yet already. And if you have already, appreciate your support. Thank you. See you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.